So without further ado, I'm going to be introducing uh, Ron here, and we're looking forward to having him talk to us tonight about hot air balloons. Okay, well thank you very much. Hi everybody. So I appreciate to have the opportunity to be here and to share our wonderful sport of hot air balloons. So it's, you know, I, I appreciate in the aviation industry of what you're doing here of stimulating interest in general aviation. And uh, we're trying to do the same thing with hot air balloons. Uh, when you see a lot of the pilots, they talk about the graying of the pilots. So as you see, I'm one of them. But it's, it's I, I say I'm in a wonderful sport. I've never flown anything else. Else. and uh, what I want to do is I have a summary and we can talk about 45 minutes and then we'll have a 15 minute question and answer and I like to cover a lot of topics mainly I want to throw a lot of things out at you to generate more questions than anything and and I did bring my crew so I'm going to tell you about myself in a minute but I want to let you know we have a student pilot here Matthew and his father is student and then we have Jim and Judy Rockwell you can tell their husband and wife they're not sitting together <laughs> and then Dick Rule over here so um, we, we love if we're not flying we love talking about ballooning but I, I live in Howard County I've been a balloon pilot for 26 years and love it um, we we have not that many balloon pilots in Maryland so I feel like we're an elite group that uh, when you see a lot of, lot of uh, other aircraft, uh, it's still a rare event to see a hot air balloon. So how many have seen a hot air balloon in the last six months fly? Okay. How many have been close to a balloon or actually have flown in a balloon? Okay, so we know what our, our, <laughs> our, our starting point is. So that's what I want to get into, talking about the pilot, I want to talk about hot air ballooning, the ones that have said I've never been near or up close to a balloon before. We always like to talk about, at, during our hot air balloon flights, we have a ceremony at the end of champagne or apple cider and we talk about uh, the first balloon flights in, in the um, in, in the not only in the country but in, in France and the quick story goes that the first top, the first balloon flight took place in 1783 and in France and they call them the Montgolfier brothers to make a short story on that they decided they had a silk factory and they found out that by putting silk in, in, in a form and lighting heat and charcoal that this thing would lift up so in testing it further and I'm so thankful for ordinary people like me that can fly a balloon from the day one and that's what we're going to say here that's my balloon called dream star and the Montgolfier balloon back then they they put a chicken goat and they said okay well let's see if they can go over the hill and land and let's see if we can get who's the first volunteer I'll get in there and let me try then the first volunteer got up went over trees landed and that's really how they got got started with figuring out if a hot air balloon could even work so it, it was perfected with with uh, let's say charcoal heat silk and where it has progressed today, we'll talk a little bit more about it. What we're going to talk about is, is a nylon envelope, and we'll ask all of you to pass these around, and you can see nylon. We like to do this with the schools and presentations that we make. When somebody, Some people always often ask, well, what happens if you're flying and a bird flies into your balloon? You know, the, the idea is they think it's going to rip it, pop a hole, and shred it. But I really like anybody here to uh, pull on it and rip it and you can see how strong and durable it is. It's ripstop nylon and very strong. So I think that's our starting point to then talk about, you know, how a balloon flies. We're going to talk about safety. I like to talk about pilots, our crew people, and talk about our passengers and the flights in general. So that's what I'm going to try to cover in in the next so many minutes. So to, to start out, I'd like to start with some pictures. 
And that's all we really have to share because I think in doing this presentation, it's gonna it's gonna start out like like a hot air balloon flight does. See, I think I've got our got things in order, but once we take off and we get, begin, I have no idea what's gonna happen. So, it may look like conversations. I'm hitting a lot of topics for you, but we're also gonna have a lot of pretty pictures in the background to impress you with what what a hot air balloon does. So, go back to. So really what I wanted to show you, uh, my, my cue is he's only going to change a picture when I do that. <laughs> okay, so back up another. <laughs> so what I, keep going back to the group. So what, what I want to say is if it started, everything starts with somebody's idea and a one. Well, anybody been to Albuquerque? Uh, I think they're going to have 600 balloons in, in the next two weeks. And the most they ever had, I think, was close to 1,000 on our anniversary about 10 years ago. So it is impressive. And some of our topics are such that, well, why is ballooning so interesting? We'll talk about festivals in a little while. I think there's a resurgence in ballooning for some reason. In the last year, we've, we've been overwhelmed with two festivals that we did. With when you say you trend, and then this year you had five times the amount of people coming out that you didn't expect. Um, there's something going on there, so we're thrilled with that. And I think that's why. Thousands, they get, they get thousands and thousands, of, I think they had a million people there one time, 10 day event in Albuquerque. So I'm jumping from one extreme. You saw my balloon a minute ago, a festival up in Dansville, New York on a hillside, and it's such quiet and peaceful. And then you can go to a, a big festival and see pictures like this. So there are things like that that I think impress and overwhelm people that want to get a little more involved or want to know a little more about it hot air ballooning and, and and how it works. So what I'd like to do is since I may, uh, most of us have always seen either on TV or pictures, you've always seen balloons in the air. So what I want to do is show you then, and thank goodness for GoPro, <laughs> and we'll see for the um, uh, other ways of taking pictures, but this is what you see in a balloon a few hundred feet up in the air, family, just floating along and you know before the GoPro cameras a lot a lot of fantastic pictures uh, that we're seeing on on YouTube and, and other places so there's a, there's a family flying along having a ball in dream star balloon and as we are jumping around pictures as you see with Scott where when we lay out uh, sometimes it's a little tight area and he's right up against the, the buffalo in, in the, uh, the launch site. So as we start expanding the operation to say, well, what, what do you see up there at a thousand feet? Uh, the, the disadvantage of fixed wing is that things are going by so fast. I like to think that ballooning gives you this calm, relaxing, slow motion effect that you really see things that we all take for granted, but uh, the farmers in the corn and the layout, you know, when we can fly five feet over corn, just enjoying everything, it's a whole new sensation in aviation. So here we are flying a couple thousand feet up in Carroll County, and uh, we'll, we'll start distinguishing different sizes of hot air balloons. This is a 105,000 cubic foot balloon, and we'll talk about this is a Cameron balloon. There are only a few manufacturers of balloons in the world. And we'll be talking about an envelope and a basket, and we'll see some up close pictures of the uh, of rest of the equipment. And again, for the folks that love to take pictures and videos and so forth, what you see looking down is always overwhelming. So that's just one visual when you're about 800 or 1,000 feet off the ground. This was a little mini festival we had. Uh, a few bl balloons got together. It's always great when you're the only balloon in the sky or when you're flying with a few friends. So that's what one, one, one caption of this one moment in time. And what we're going to see is when we're setting up a balloon, we have a huge 10 foot flame that gives us heat. So, and this is one of my pictures. I, I may have photo enhanced that a little bit, but uh, 
that's what we see when you pick that one peak fall foliage day it the, it's overwhelming with with the colors that we get <clears throat> and there's another one it really does look like that so and looking down on the ground we're flying over uh, farmland we fly primarily in Carroll County Frederick and Howard County and the rolling hills out there are breathtaking the flatlands down in Easton with that festival early, last month it was impressive too with all the crop and and just the tributaries in the bay just the fo the, the the scenery is is breathtaking here's another quick shot of just crew helping so these first few pictures are just jumping around but uh, as a pilot I can't do it alone you fixed wing can get in the flight and go fly and leave me alone for a while I need help I can't do it alone so this is one of our launch sites up in Mount Airy it's a it's a nursing home so we launch from from this area and take off and we're heading north up towards Taylorsville and that's that's also another fantastic scene and what we do is at the Howard County Fairgrounds we we had a benefit where we just stood the balloon up and and displayed they had the motor the motorcycle uh, groups had a special ride for kids event and I had the balloon standing when they all took off so that's just a fun action shot uh, balloons are always social we're like the social media we attract people and we let them get their hands on and do as much as they can and as much as they want. I also, after 20 some years, I was able to fly Santa and the Grinch on Christmas Eve several years ago and I haven't been able to do it since, but uh, that, was, that was always special. And again, uh, looking down on, on the land when you're flying with some other pilots, uh, the pictures are, are, are breathtaking so keep going so I want to get into a quick series of uh, setting Sun and here's four balloons you can tell maybe a slight wind tilting us slightly I like to say we landed in York PA several years ago and I always like to say I set a new world record how many kids can I get in a basket at one time <laughs> so we're always doing things to interact and balloon is setting okay we're gonna to go to the uh, balloon setup and we'll go through these these pictures rather quickly but to some of the points I want to bring out Matthew at his young age his his dream maker hot air balloon team they put together a system in this past year he's going to be 15 next year that means private pilot's license so he's very eager to uh, to get there so in slow motion just start putting so this is the aspirations of the young oh to be young again but I'm not sure if I would like to be young again and go through all but basically no I'm sorry I have to hold that finger back up one so what I want to show you is basically with a balloon to fly and we can take off and land anywhere so really here's their basic system you need you need the the vehicle and a trailer and everything fits in the trailer and we talk again about a basket burner uprights and envelopes so this is just a quick sample of just keep keep clicking every three seconds and uh, you, you, we, we're at a Carroll County Farm Museum we have three balloons launching we set a little helium balloon up slow down a second and uh, this is just shows you in a, in a session of what it takes to set the balloon up and, it, and you need three or four healthy people strong so here's the basket here are the burners and you, this is where you need a little muscle to do the work <clears throat> So while we're, we're setting up and planning and, and doing this, prior to that, we spend more time planning and estimating whether we're going to be able to fly right at sunrise or an hour and a half before sunset. They're the only times of the day a balloon, you'll see a balloon in the air. You might see somebody once in a while, but um, 
So we've agonized over the weather. We need less than seven miles an hour on the surface, less than 19 knots at 20, at, at 3,000 feet. So they're kind of standards you go by. And then if you believe the forecast, uh, you know, you shouldn't fly beyond that. But conditions change. So as we continue slow motion and uh, setting the balloon up so we can little, keep going. So we're laying the envelope out. The envelope, this one is a 90,000 cubic foot balloon. And it's multicolored. It's a, a 1995, what is it, 2000 package. 2000 RX8 330. It's 2000 and it shows you if you take care of your equipment, it'll last a while. Balloons normally last for six or 800 hours of flight time. They have to be inspected. Uh, by an authorized repair station and then at some point in time when they decide it's no longer airworthy then you have to either replace the top half or get a new one. Here's where we we have a, a, fa a fan like they use fire departments to blow, fan, blow smoke out of buildings. This is cold inflating when the balloon gets about two-thirds full as it is right about there. We'll see Matthew uh, get in there and hot inflate and the balloon starts taking shape. It makes sense. It's looking like, like it's something that should fly. So while we were making those decisions on uh, whether we should even fly or not, and then you need a little help from your friends, uh, we need, we need uh, a wise decision making by the pilot, we need a good weather day, and then we need uh, some good crew to make it all work. All for the sake of maybe trying to get a 45 to 60 minute balloon flight in. When you, have, when you have propane tanks, you either have 30, 30 to 40 gallons of propane on average size balloons, and you're only good for maybe up to an hour of flight time. So here we are with a nice big huge 10 foot flame. We put out 15 million BTUs out of each burner. You only use one burner at a time. But it's the idea is you, you, you then take off. Looks like student pilot happy because we got the next phase to uh, to launch. So here's the Carroll County Hospital, and we we take off. And this was a short flight. This is where our first special shaped balloon in Maryland earlier this year um, flew. We flew together, and Maryland's never had a special hot air shaped balloon before. But uh, this is where the color, and this is what impresses people. So here's where we're landing already. And this happened to be on a farmer's property, and just before sunset. And then we're just going to reverse the process of letting the balloon cool, getting permission from the landowners, and that is the benefit we have. We we land wherever we we can. Occasionally, we can talk a little later about the landowners giving us a hard time, but um, then we pack up reverse the process. Often we land in someone's backyard, we'll have two or three people come out and help, or we have 20 or 30 if we're in a cul-de-sac. Kids and fa family come out to really want to do hands-on and participate. So then this is a reverse of, of what you're seeing for packing up. And then we do a traditional champagne or apple cider toast at the end of the flight. And that's the dream maker. So we're going to go on to show you what a typical flight looks like. Which one you want? And this is balloon. This is um, Darlene's flight. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we're going to see again in a lot of pictures, but we'll try to capture it in a, in a little faster way. But we just wanted to show you again balloon setting up. We're, we're taking off, and this time we're taking a friend on, on a, a flight. And this was a, an early morning flight with two other balloons. Little mist and haze. Again, out in Carroll County, we never know. We get up in the morning and we're going to be socked in with, with mist or haze or whatever. Balloons are really, really, you know, 
we need almost perfect conditions to fly. Then they say, well, when, when will you not fly? Well, it's certain standards that pilots have adjusted, as you know. Some pilots will fly in certain conditions, others won't. It's the level of experience and what, what, what they feel like they can do. That happens with any, any, any flight in aviation. So as we're, we're proceeding here to set the balloons up and lay out, this is a gentleman's property up there in Carroll County allows us to, uh, because he has room, to launch when the winds are out of the north and east. We have about eight or nine launch sites based on wind direction. We're also right on the edge of the SFRA, DC, so we tend to stay outside of that area. So that's where you see three balloons coming up. And you can look inside the balloon and we're doing a visual test. When you walk around and check your aircraft, we're, we're doing that visual in there. Make sure that we didn't rip or tear anything on a previous flight. Because that has happened occasionally where you didn't know you ripped the balloon while it was packing up on the ground until your next flight. And then you're lowering up in a big, big hole will certainly ground you for that flight. So it takes about 30 minutes to set the balloon up with our A-team. A-team is here tonight. <laughs> what would really be good is if music went along with us. <coughs> and we do everything in slow motion. We're going to see we have, on one of the pictures, we're going to see we do a fly tech. That's our instrument telling us going up and down. And... and um, what we generally don't want to be doing is going, going up or down more than two or three hundred feet a minute. You try to do everything in slow motion with hot air balloons. 600, 600 feet, sometimes do it for testing, that, you know, if you really needed to drop fast to get into a space. Um, so there, there's the fly tech, and you can start seeing the burner and equipment overhead. And then when you're flying with other balloons, we like to take pictures of each other. And it, it's great flying at three to four thousand feet, but it's also fly, neat flying over treetops. And sometimes you come in low over treetops to catch a, slow, a wind to slow you down. On this particular flight, it was slow on the surface and just 500 feet up, it was really moving along. So you like to play in the trees. And we're kind of always doing, I don't have any pictures of us, a lot of, lot of ponds and, and lakes and tribute, well, mm -hmm. reservoir out in Carroll County, we like to do a little splash and dash with the basket as we did just the other day. Yep. First splash and dash. So we're always testing ourselves, aren't we? We're always, why don't you just go to three, four thousand feet and fly? Well, the fun is to go over treetops to see, you know, how fast you're going or to, for training purposes, let the balloon skim the tops of the trees if you ever have to slow down and then drop in right behind trees. So there's a lot of skills that I've learned from other people. Of course, we're the sum total of everything we were taught. Students are the sum total of everything they're gonna, and you pass it on. Well, we pass on bad traits, so we pass on good traits. So you like to think that uh, the new generation is learning all the right things because we do get stale after a while, as they say, don't, don't we? So that's a typical balloon flight. And here's another, another pilot, Patrick, doing the champagne toast with the family. And then we pack up and go home and talk about refuel and then we talk about our next flight. So now I'd like to talk a little bit about balloon festivals. And anybody been to a festival? Okay. Did you work a festival? Which one did you go to? I went, I went a year ago to Albuquerque. Oh, great. And a month or two ago in uh, Western Jersey, right? New Jersey? Yeah. Yeah, that's the biggest on the East Coast. Went to one in upstate New York in Jamesville. Jamesville. Uh huh. Yep. So, yep. so 
what, again, I briefly referred to the idea of what, what is a bloom festival and what is attracting people. This year, I've been fortunate to be the bloom meister for the Easton Festival, for the Preakness Balloon Festival. And after several years, we got involved with Facebook and social media letting the word out and somehow that generated such huge interest that I think that's why we had people couldn't get into the festival and so forth. But Great Chesapeake Balloon and Wine Festival this year moved it from just south of the Easton Airport to a winery up on Cordova Road and it was, it was fantastic. This, this is a picture from last year in Easton and this is the beginnings of a balloon glow. So we'll see daylight pictures and we'll see getting near dark and that seems to be a huge attraction and interest with people. Just watching the glow for 20 minutes. Glow, no glow and it's beautiful. Pictures can't really capture what's going on. So here is what then the wine festival looked like and it's called Triple Creek Winery. If you ever like to do, I'd suggest going over there and hanging out there. Great family that own the place. But this is where we we had, I'm saying, 12 to 13 thousand people, and we were expecting 4 thousand because that's all we were getting the last three years. So, how do you, whoever's in marketing and understanding marketing, how do you deal with that? We had huge success at Preakness. We had huge success here, and the price of success was kind of like we were apologizing because everybody got in they loved it the thousands of people that couldn't get in because of traffic they were nasty and mean and but they, they had to vent their anger somewhere and they did it on Facebook so okay so so we're gonna see see the clown it's the three faces he calls pilot Mark Meyer calls it uh, carnival and then we're going to start seeing the teddy bear. Chuck Wagner lives in Delaware. That's his balloon. And then you have a lot of ordinary looking balloons. But they're still impressive. It's, it's always like, you know, balloon is so overwhelming and impressive looking, but it takes a special shape to dazzle everybody. So, and some different pictures. When we say tethers, we had two balloons going up and down. And then we had hundreds of people in line to do tethers and not enough hours in a day to get everybody up and down to satisfy everybody. So there's another issue, can't deal with demand. So okay, so I had two balloons, next year we'll have three balloons, or maybe I should have four balloons tethering, see if that'll take care of demand. <laughs> When we see all these beautiful pictures of festivals, our main flying season on the East Coast is April through October. And any year there's about average of 30 balloon festivals uh, somewhere east of the Mississippi. So these are just a series of showing some pretty pictures. Again, there's no logic or this is like, like us taking a balloon flight. You know, when we're flying, we're just dealing with the moment. So that's what I'm asking you to do. We're jumping around a little bit, but showing you some, some nice pictures along the way. And then when it gets dark, the balloon glow takes over and impress, impresses everybody. And every once in a while you get an exceptional photographer, Betty Fowler, she took some great pictures up at Preakness that won, won an award with um, New York USA Today magazine. So here we are flying low over, I like to say we kiss the tassels of the corn, we go high, low, we try to avoid farm animals, we try to stay high, we try to respect the landowners, we get complaints. We try our best to deal with it, and but sometimes, uh, I don't know how to explain it, 90% of the people and the farmers love it, but there's always somebody, isn't it, that's going to give you a hard time. They had a bad day. They don't want you there, even though we didn't damage and we we're on the corner of the road. So pilots not only are patient people, but they have to learn how to deal with the unexpected. You know, when somebody tells you to get off their property, it's best that we just move on, even though we're running out of daylight. And so there's a lot of issues. So anyway, you saw a ground picture. Uh, great pictures. Mark Meyer uh, lives up in Westminster. He's just moved back a second. 
But after he bought this earlier in the year, we found out that he, I was going to have him come at Preakness, so we found that four people at the meeting all had fear of clowns. You ever heard that? Anybody have a uh, some kind of phobia? So, <laughs> but it, at Easton there was no problem. Everybody loved it. So, and then the, this this balloon, it's just a little subtle artwork that you can add to a regular shaped balloon to make it make it very special. Now, go ahead. And, and the background, these are just a small sampling of the pictures. I'm going to encourage you to go to YouTube and put in festivals in Easton. And I mean, there's it's unbelievable the amount of pictures that are, that are out there. And again, you can see the different size balloons. Um, you can see bigger balloons. You can see 120,000. You can see 90,000 Matthews balloon special shape teddy bear and if, if you get it to coordinate just right and you get the right setting in the background I think that's what is a pa attracting to people up to five years ago last time you had any balloons on Eastern Shore was about 15 years ago at Easton they had a little festival and after that it's been nothing so hopefully we're going to be able to bring ballooning into the Eastern Shore and uh, get the interest going so if this is starting to tell a story, and people, put that back one second. I mean, this is, this is the balloon area, and then all the people were jammed. We had 30 vendors. We had uh, National Guard and others doing uh, rock climbing wall. And so, people, uh, uh, but people come in, and, and most have never been near a balloon before. Others are regulars, they, they've been to festivals, and they know what to expect. <clears throat> So as we, as we continue through some of these pictures, I would just like to talk about, you know, so far we really haven't seen all these people up close, but each, see there's, there's Dick walking around, but it takes the pilot and at least two crew members to safely set the balloon up, make sure everything is safe and working. We get the passengers involved, and I think that's where the people like it. They like the hands-on experience. Like the, see, so you have a gripper handle and you grip it for three seconds and it puts a 10 foot flame, and that balloon really jumps on cold days. The balloon jumps like a motorcycle. On hot days, it's laboring and we're using a lot more fuel. So, I'd like to talk about the pilots and the crew and the passengers in some kind of order that way, but as we're st still looking at the pictures. When you're looking at all the pilots of, you know, why, why did I pick a balloon instead of a seaplane or a helicopter? It, it's fascinating. People will pick their, what they like. And then others are, you know, you'll go after different ratings. But um, uh, I think it's just fascinating. We have only a few balloon pilots in Maryland. We could use a lot more. I say everybody loves balloons, loves to look at it then it starts reducing probably only 60 percent of the people will really fly in a balloon and then only a handful of people will want to become a balloon pilot we do like to stress and I don't know whether in your sport do you, we say ballooning is a dangerous sport you know it is we have to say that on a release form and everything else but I'm probably the biggest chicken pilot of anybody if I don't think it's right whether to fly I don't fly and that's always they talk the margin zone. You know, when you're standing there, I don't know whether you should, and don't fly. Because it only deteriorates, okay, hold it there. It only deteriorates from there with the weather pattern. So with a pilot, they're average people. They took an interest in ballooning. They took their first flight. Next thing you know, they want 10 hours of flight time and same thing with, with fixed wing. Um, what I really say with hot air balloon pilots, you know, they're just a mixed bag of characters. And it's a, it's a great bunch of people. We've been around ballooning for 20, probably 30 years. I started out, you take your first ride, but I t started with uh, becoming a vendor with my wife, the pin lady, selling things at festivals. So I'd go out and sneak a ride and learn a lot. And we met and know an awful lot of people right now that are in the ballooning community. And believe me, ballooning is a family event. It's like father, son, 
and I'm not sure whether the mother still would like to get involved, but and I'd just like to emphasize with the pilots, they're they're family oriented, ordinary people, and most fly only balloons. Others have multiple ratings and different things, and and uh, so like the fellow that owns the clown, the carnival balloon. He's actually in the military. He flies helicopters and he trains helicopters, Black Rock, you know, Black Hawk helicopters at Fort Meade. Well, he's in the air all the time. He has four kids growing up and you think they just... So what is he doing? He's been ballooning for the last 30 years also. So he flies during the week, he comes home and then they fly all weekend. So it's like when do we know when we're supposed to retire? Has anybody figured that out yet? You know, when does somebody have to tell us, you know, it's time, go sit in the corner and, but you know, we just keep doing it. So then it's like, we don't know how to retire ourselves, but when we do retire an envelope, it's no longer airworthy. We just cold inflate it, keep it inflated enough. And for a modest fee, have the kids and people go walk in and around it. So this is a huge attraction at, fo at festivals just to go in and run around and kick a beach ball around. So, the crew. We talk about the crew. What, what, is, what does a crew person look like? <laughs> look at this. Um, I always say we're always looking for a few good crew. Pilots are always abusing or treating them just right. That We want to make sure they got up at 4.30 in the morning, Saturday, to come to the field to be told we're not flying and how dare we then call them Sunday and say let's do it again <laughs> so some will come out and do it because of the love of the sport they have and so pilots are truly appreciative of what the crew people are doing for us so I say normally most balloons need need, a, need at least two to three crew people the more the better we always have the passengers if I can carry four passengers at a time they love the hands-on experience also. So this is great. This is great. Wouldn't it be great if we had a flying area here somewhere and you know you could have a festival right here at the airport. To show you the difference of the sizes of balloons, the Energizer Bonnie is not flying anymore, but we'd have we had it at the Preakness for several years. They need 16 crew people to make this huge Energizer Bunny fly it's it's amazing <clears throat> and I, I say it just talking about passengers in general that uh, I say passengers are really precious and they are also priceless I say they're precious because there are so many people want to fly I thought after the first couple of years we'd saturate the market and nobody want to fly but 26 years later people keep calling I like to fly my my mother's going to be 92 and all she's wanted to do is fly in a hot air balloon or we do so many wedding proposals we do weddings and that's the fascination that gets people going they call someone asks the first question they'll just get in a balloon and fly I always jokingly say my first passenger I work with and he didn't know that was my first flight with a passenger but some people ask a ton of questions which they should others don't they just get in a balloon and they have such trust in I guess the appearance that we give as far as the pilot and the crew and what we're looking like we're doing so hold it there a minute and that's why I say it, it's precious and then just generally with stories hearing when we just presented a flight and we did the champagne and letting the folks talk and say what they thought of it I love the feedback from them because so many times people are saying things that I've never heard before about why did you do this well, I loved it did you see this and that people are impressed by different feelings and sensations they get when it when they're in a hot air balloon and that's what keeps it rewarding and interesting at least for me and I think the crew does enjoys that too <clears throat> let me see here so I really just want to talk about safety for a minute I lost track of time we started 10 minutes do I have a few more minutes okay um, talk about safety in general 
just because that's all part of what we do and what you do. And what do you fly, sir? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. Anybody flying anything special? Okay. What we have is, um, I say, with safety, ballooning is still one of the safest sports in aviation. We had a tragic accident in, in Texas. And just for curiosity, because I found this interesting too, how many know about the balloon accident in, in ta Texas? Okay. Heard about it. I didn't hear Okay, the most of you did. Uh, we were afraid that, you know, it was, demand would slow down a little bit, but, but I found out that many people didn't even know about it. And I mean, it, it, it's terrible. When accidents happen, they're always on video. It's always the worst case scenario. And, um, but as, as I said here, I, I say, <clears throat> Pilots have the opportunity to, to, to attend safety seminars every year. Pilots are recertified every two years, as we know. Balloons are inspected yearly by an authorized repair station. And simply what, what they do is, you know, you, you test it and it's good for five or six hundred hours. They have a 40 pound pull test on nylon. And if, if they pull each color and if it doesn't rip, you're good for another year. So you're always cringing when they're, and that's a lot of pressure. But if it fails, then you either replace the top third or you're saying, sorry, you're bullying, you need to go buy a new one. But I say with all the inspections and all the care in all of aviation, it's still, it's still sad that, that we say with all, the, with all of the safety procedures in place, we still have accidents and the tragic accident and um, we say what are the reasons that, that there are accidents well as we know it's it's really three things it's pilot decision making and in ballooning often it's pilot can be <coughs> distracted because you're standing right there talking to your passengers and having a good time next thing you know the balloon's dropping in a terminal descent and you can't recover you can't get enough heat in there and next thing you know they're in power lines the weather is is certainly something that we really have to worry about because it's changing constantly you know we start off in the morning next thing you know we're going this way next thing you know we're going that way so we take off we have our best plans like the beginning of this meeting i thought we knew what we were doing but once you take off we don't have a clue we don't know where we're going to land we don't know what we're going to experience and that's always a challenge and then simply equipment often by equipment tying and, and tightening up the, 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 the um, fuel line. So we didn't tighten up a fuel line and we, we take off, next thing you know, flames are coming out of the, uh, the burner. And if you're a thousand feet in the air, you got the fire extinguisher and you either put it out or again, you're coming down to the ground. So equipment check, the checkers checking the checker and two things happen either you can say not in a bragging way but ballooning is a fairly safe and predictable sport if you follow all the proper safety guidelines and I'm sure all that sounds familiar to you we do have a safe sport so what I like like to do is See if you'd like to hear a, couple, a few stories and tell me which one you'd like to hear. Uh, uh, one, I, I, I flew two Catholic nuns. Another, a farmer shot at us last year while we were in flight. Uh, I, I flew a blind man who really experienced the flight. And I had a gal who passed out just moments before the wedding proposal at 2,000 feet. So, <laughs> but the stories go on and on. It, it is amazing. Just when we say we had a predictable flight, un uneventful, you do like those, but most flights it's always something that, gee, we came a little close to those trees, or gee, that was a hard landing, or gee, that landowner was really nasty because we had to get out of the field through his property, and, and he was really nasty because that pilot over there was training, and uh, anyway, so we always have good stories to tell, good or bad, and every Everything imaginable that you can think of has happened to pilots since the 1960s when this concept of ballooning um, 
propane, nylon, and wicker baskets. As you know, before that, it was hel helium, hydrogen, and you know, it's sandbags. It wanted to shoot up. This thing wants to drop <coughs> to the ground. So we're fighting to keep it up. So when you talk about the, the ups and downs, we want that the balloon to be very predictable, very slow. Ballooning in general and festivals and everything that we're all doing as balloon pilots. This was this picture won an award uh, at USA Today and it was on TV or a couple places. This was last year at Preakness celebration. We we on, we honored wounded warriors, military, we had the first responders, and we had quite and and, and I don't have enough time to show you all the pictures. We had that other group. Um, Preakness second, Preakness 2015. So show that after we, we show this. But um, then we had the whole, anyway, it's just one picture says a thousand words, and, and I think that was fantastic. So back up one. This was a turf alley, and again, we had, we had five times the number of people, but if you can get the pictures going right, uh, you know, we get some fantastic shots of flying right towards BWI is not good. This happened to be a good direction, <laughs> flying uh, away from uh, and outside outside the SFRA. So hit a couple more of those pictures. So this was a ceremony. We had the Boy Scouts involved, and they did a reenactment of Iwo Jima with the uh, the guard and the and the uh, military there and uh, Power County Fire Rescue. So we we kind of packaged everything again. We had some wounded warriors here. It was a very impressive ceremony. So, so there's more to just, just standing up and flying a balloon and you know, landing and going away. So I think we've captured this interest after several years at Preakness and the price of success right now is Preakness. We're considering moving it to the Howard County Fairgrounds because Turf Alley is just out of room. No more room to do it. So yeah Go through a couple more. Okay, and then this is this is Preakness. <coughs> and the glow and the elephant is one of the big special shaped balloons. And that was 16 or 50. Yeah, now do 16. And I want to show you just a couple more pictures, and then we'll have some questions and answers. Um, while we're looking at a couple of the other, there's two I just want to show you out of this next cluster, but what I just want to share with you, if you meet a hot air balloon pilot that's been around a long time, one, one character trait you're going to know about them is that they're very patient people. Because we, we've canceled more flights than we've ever flown. We've gone to the moment of launch and we're not going to fly. And then you have, you have upset crew, you have upset passengers, but <laughs> but that's what keeps you safe after all these years, I think. So um, I didn't show you any pictures of accidents. You're welcome to look at YouTube because there's plenty of them there. But that would give you the proper balance of flying in a hot air balloon. Again, it is a dangerous sport. So this is, this is what creates at a country club, a golf course. This is a driving range and 300 VIPs come to a tent and vendors and thousands of people coming in. So. Uh, I think it's fantastic. But anyway, if, if I can lead into that, what else did we want to call? Oh, keep going. Keep going until you get the, the drone picture of the glow. And then, then I like to open and see if anybody has any questions and answers because I'm really throwing more things out so that you can have questions coming back on all the things. That's the downward view looking down into upside down view into a pond. <clears throat> and this is the great expectation of passengers ready to take off. I'm trying to build some hype and excitement for everybody that somebody might want to take a balloon ride and then see sponsors or everything when when we do festivals now this is what I like hold it there so of course the drones are in trouble with everybody but when when one comes to the festival and you don't know they're doing it and then he takes pictures where else can we get a downward view of a glow at night unless a drone that he shared that with me but 
you know, we, we told them to stay away from the balloons. But anyway, I think that shot is great because I've never seen a picture like that anywhere else looking down on a balloon glow, right? So anyway, do you have any questions? That, that's, that's the important thing. Special shape, Claude the Crab. So as we, as we scroll through some, some different pictures then, what, what I just want to really summarize and say, yeah, there are some fantastic stories to tell. And um, that's the experience with a drone going around Patrick's balloon. So at least you get a little flavor on what's going on with the hot air ballooning community. And hopefully we have two activities down on Eastern Shore now. <clears throat> we have Easton and who goes to the Pork in the Park in Salisbury? We had six balloons down there last year and they invited us back again this year in April. But so we'd love to do some more activity with hot air ballooning on Eastern Shore. So Anybody? Question? Yes, sir. I don't want to start off negative, but uh, what is the most common uh, type of accident? Most common type of accident? I, I think it's, it's hard landings. Hard landings. And uh, most accidents and injuries happen before the balloon takes off or after it lands. Where, and unfortunately, two occasions where balloon will come in for a landing <clears throat> and everybody's holding on to the side and somebody jumps out a little too soon so it's heat it's weight displacement if somebody gets out the balloon all of a sudden is jumping up in the air next thing you know one of the crew didn't let go and they're 30 40 feet up and they fall to their death that's happened a couple times now in the last couple years but just hard landing and that's where we always never get it right with with the, with the crew with the student pilots because it's it's burn 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 and you want to come down and just hit the ground just right and other times you'll hit it, a little wind shift and then it's boom boom and then you're really windy conditions you're hitting and balloon lays out and you're dragging along so and then you're prone to you know uh, hurting your hip your leg uh, but and then the more tragic ones are then you know hitting power lines so yes sir so your decision making process as far as a go no go I imagine it's probably what first wind and then cloud cover I couldn't hear you say the decision on whether to go or not go you say you make that decision sometime just before you take off I would guess that maybe the first is wind and second cloud cover as far as what going on yeah, yeah, it, it's it's more just the wind. We look at the surface winds and winds aloft at 3,000 feet. And if it's less than seven miles an hour on the surface, and if it's, <coughs> excuse me, and if it's um, less than 19 knots at 3,000, we shouldn't fly. You can put a pie wall, which is a healing balloon, and if it goes up and it's above the 45 degree angle, that's usually good flying. If it's lower, that means the wind is stronger and faster and you can see it dart out. Then you watch it as it goes out, what direction it goes in, because you want to make sure it's going in the direction you have landing and not towards an airport or someplace else where you shouldn't be. With all the forecasts, you know, the first thing we're pulling out of the trailer when we get there is the little balloon. And part of that is, okay, the forecast said we should fly from here today. It went that way. Oh, we got to change location. So it's verifying the forecast. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's a little challenging. We're right on the edge of the SFRA, the northern gate, and you go there because the wind said it's going to be, you know, like, like 180 <coughs> degrees at five miles an hour. So you say, okay, we're going that way. And we'll put a pie ball up, and it went that way. Well, 20 minutes later, when we're ready to launch, the wind often has shifted completely and it's taken us in a direction that is going right paralleling the SFRA. But, um, so, yeah, we're, we're agonizing, and half the, half the day I'm checking weather because I can't get up in the morning and predictably say I'm going to fly that night just because a front's coming in or it's going out. And I don't know, all of you keep track on, on the weather on the weekends, but I tell you what, this whole year, I mean, so many Saturdays and Sundays have been not good for flying a balloon. 
and that old front is splitting Saturday night. It's either a rain and, or fog or else it's a breeze Sunday. So we're in really strange weather patterns. So. Do we not see more balloons around here? I, I figured either because of uh, the bay or uh, uh, controlled airspace. Is that why you want to stay away from probably large bodies of water and controlled airspace, correct? Yeah. Yeah, the 30 mile radius and then the 60 mile. And, but um, mainly here it's because uh, too many tributaries. The winds like in Easton are out of the southwest going right up Cordova Road, which is great. But we don't like the wind changing on us. Next thing you know, it's out over over the bay. So if a pilot, there is a pilot that lives right down the street almost, but he often goes to Ridgely to launch from there just for that predictability. So yeah, you, you like areas where, where we are in Carroll County. Plenty of farmland, plenty of places to land in any direction that we go. Besides the wind and the clouds, we're also concerned about rain. Uh, you know, we'd like to at least have at least a hundred mile buffer at the time we launch before the next rain's going to be there. Pop up thunderstorms are the worst because there's no defined front. There's just maybe no rain here. When we go to launch 20 minutes later, there could be rain because you know, you're getting the balloon above boiling temperatures on nice hot summer days of water. That top of the balloon that's all convex can start to become a bowl full of hot water. Eventually, let's go. The fabric doesn't do well repeatedly getting wet, um, so it's it's the clouds, the water, the rain, and and the wind. Yeah. As you said earlier. Yeah. What about lightning? Yeah, that that's nasty. That would. <laughs> it's rarely good. I hate it. Yeah. Lightning yeah. Lightning yeah. Lightning yeah. gets hit by lightning. Yeah. Thor or something. Yeah. No, but I've seen some things like that at festivals that shock me, mm -hmm. that they let the balloons fly, where we're looking out at New Jersey Festival ballooning about six years ago and from Round Valley, you see these dark clouds coming and they say storms are coming and see lightning and they're still letting these balloons launch. Yeah. So well, it was that's nice. just poor, poor judgment on the organizers but on the pilots that knowing the same weather would dare to take off in that. So one, one interesting story, and I don't know if there are any other questions, but took off in Carroll County with another pilot a few years ago, and there were clouds, clouds, and they were dissipating. Okay, wait another 10 minutes, no. and it was all breaking up clear sky, and the clouds were moving beyond us. So, okay, it's safe to take off. So we took off, and we're, and it's, you know how they say the prettier clouds are the more dangerous and more violent? Man, that fantastic color of the white of these clouds that were, you know, the clouds are head ups and we're flying. And those clouds redeveloped into a thunderstorm. So we're in Carroll County and Oregon Ridge Park. It was not that many miles away, but it was heading right there. So we were able to fly and we were at the back end of this isolated storm. Well, that was so violent that the concert at Oregon Ridge, they told people to leave because it was so bad. So that's how that storm was so violent and nasty and something went over us but it wasn't that bad you know it developed two miles after it went over us which i thought I always remember that that was because we could have been in it we could have been sucked in and anyway is there any required training for crew as you mentioned if you don't let go in time it could be bad uh, the, is there anything required yeah we go to safety seminars and the crew is welcome and also often I mean, required. FAA, I mean, FAA. No, Say what? FAA regulations for training the crew. And there really, there the really point. isn't. But what the pilots we've learned to to instill in them, you know, the right things to do. I mean, they all could fly the balloon if they had to, because they watched and and knew so much going on. But. They're the things that happen. And I have, what are some of the key sayings I have? When I'm landing and other people come around to help, I say, first rule of crewing is you never let your feet leave the ground when they're doing that. Because if you're not, people are hopping out. And so, you know, that, that's one thing. They know the sense for fuel leaks. They know, and driving is another whole issue. Here, I'm having a great time. <laughs> and they're worrying about keeping up with me on the ground. And other people are not paying attention. 
and driving and next thing you know could be an accident they don't want to cross you know into groundhog holes and and just putting the equipment back not ripping it on the ground so yeah there's so many things that we're dependent on the crew and um, but you're right FA doesn't have that That's true. what's for I guess it would be a small to medium sized balloon what kind of what kind of area do you need to launch? How big an area would you need? And I don't know what small or medium. Well, is. the balloon lays out lays out 90 feet. 90. And then we need another 100 foot rope for the crown guy to go beyond that, because then the balloon, when you cold inflate, starts standing up. So figure 100 by 50. But then we don't know where the wind's coming from, so we really need 120 by 120 square, let's say. Good quarter acre. To land in all directions, so. And it can be tighter. We've put it up in very tight areas. But you always wanted the, when you say the ideal, you want it to be, you know, where there's no, and we put, we put up sometimes pretty close to a house where we launch from. Pretty close to trees where we say hold on and give me a little pop so we jump up and clear the trees. But yeah, crew is invaluable, you know. Polish or nothing without crew. And any day they could walk out on me. <laughs> Remember that. And you say minimum crew is how many people? I know it depends on experience. Yeah. Yeah, two. I've had one crew when we've had three, three guys, getting the passengers that can help. But at least two crew and then the passengers help. Sometimes we have three elderly ladies and we know we can't get much work from them and we don't expect it. So then we need three three crew. So total uh, boots on the ground. You need how many people? Well, we've we've, we've done it. I mean, yeah, we've done it with three. with pilot plus two crew. Mm -hmm. we, we like plus two two for and it depends on the size of the balloon. A uh, ninety thousand to a, to a hundred five thousand. Two three is nice. Two's minimum. Three is nice. You start going beyond that gentleman up in the new market area, his is 120,000. It'd be nice to have an extra crew member go to, go to three to four. Um, the one thing that's probably unique with ballooning as far as crew, predominantly throughout the industry, crew is strictly volunteer. We don't get a paycheck. Um, pilots um, treat their volunteer crew well by the majority. Oh, you know what? I haven't flown you for a while. I only got two passengers. You're hopping in. Um, you know what, you know, we got time, the passengers didn't ride with me, they're already headed home, who wants dinner? You know, we canceled this morning, got you up at 4.30, we're not flying, let's go to breakfast. So, uh, so well taken care of. So we use a flight tech, is a flight tech used in any of the aircraft that you all, but it's the same thing, it shows us rate of descent, rate of ascent, tells us how hot it is at the top of the balloon. We could burn a hole right through the top of the balloon, uh, you know, on a hot day. So it's about 150 degree max, and with all the little calculations we do on a 60 degree day, you can carry 750 pounds of passenger. And sometimes pilots go to balloon festivals and they say, we've got five passengers for you, and it's a terribly hot day. That pilot's doing their darndest to, to get that flight up. Next thing you know, they're, they're testing it, and they're burning, and the balloon's not going up. Or they get it up, and then it's coming down to power lines and they can't put enough heat in there to get rise again and then they're into power lines so but anyway equipment that's what keeps us straight and and that's what hot air balloons are so they're the ups and downs they're good points and they're bad points it's a dangerous sport but uh, we love it. <laughs> and the instrument sends out audible alarms based on rate of descent and ascent, as well as it's set for the max temperature for the fabric of your balloon. Because there's nylon, there's polyester, there's a few different ones out with different temperature ratings. So when you're getting close, it starts beeping. When you're really close, it beeps more. So feel free to come up and look at some pretty pictures in the book, in the magazine, and uh, well, what we you appreciate use, you allowing us what to do come. You use it when that Fails. Say what? What do you use when that fails? Your eyes. Well, yeah. It's, <laughs> actually, we have to defer to our <coughs> our, our, our instinct and common sense. See, because when you're in a balloon and you close your eyes, you have no sensation of movement. 
You're going with the wind, your hair's not blowing, you're, you're going up or down, and that's where you have to have that visual. And otherwise, when you get down around six or 800 feet drop per second, you can tell you're, you're dropping, but dropping two, 300 feet, you, you don't even feel it. So yeah, without equipment, and that's happened, you know, the batteries go dead, and then you just by the seat of the pants. But that's the way it should be all the time, don't you think? <laughs> why, why do I keep worrying about we're at 3,000 feet and we're going up at 200 feet a minute? I mean, so anyway, this is what makes it safe for everybody. And again, as I say, because I'm an average person, I, I got involved in ballooning, and, and uh, but there are people that are risk takers in every sport. So, hope you come to Easton Festival next year and learn more about it. And pork in the park. Or pork in the park. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.